entertain with the NPC resolution yesterday. Let's speak with uh, Johnson Chuku. Johnson Chuku is uh, the CEO, MD CEO of Career Asset Management. He was speaking to us via Skype. Uh, Johnson, good morning and welcome to today's business. Yes, so good to have you join us. I am sure that um, I shouldn't question that. I'm aware that you obviously would have followed the development uh, uh, from the NPC. Let's look at uh, the parameters. The NPC has retained all parameters. And um, the CBN governor, like you listened a while ago, he said um, eight of the members voted for retain retainment. Why two of the members uh, wanted the NPRO reduced? Uh, why would you think that um, anyone would want the NPRO reduced at this point in time? Um, David, I think anybody who is thinking of a uh, reduction of the NPR, the person is obviously looking at uh, easing of uh, monetary policies, uh, basically thinking that if you take if you reduce the monetary policy rates, you will uh, bring down further interest rates and uh, make it easier for the private sector to borrow or cheaper for the private sector to borrow. And that hopefully will stimulate economic activities. But you know, they, I can also be pleasing with those who felt that we should keep it at current levels. Uh, of course, you know, if you bring down um, monetary policy, if you even succeed in driving down uh, interest rate, and not likely going to see an uptick in lending because banks are not going to start in the world at the period when the economy is going to a recession. Secondly, the central bank government did mention that the banks have been restructuring. The existing loans with me, and he said that without any shutting of the this model, and it shows that we've seen weakening in the quality of payments in the market system. So it's not a period when the banks will be very foolish in lending. So I think a reduction in monetary policy rates would have had the desired impact of increasing credit and stimulating further economic activities, which is the intention we should be asking that the population needs. Let's look at the reasons that the CBN gave for uh, retaining all the parameters. It says uh, uh, they, they want to see how uh, the reduction uh, that was done at the last minute, how it has um, stimulated uh, uh, the economy. Uh, let's look at it from this perspective. Do, do you think that uh, uh, the CBN should be looking at tinkering uh, with the NPR, or you think that they should uh, just have retained it like they did, looking at uh, all the parameters? Well, if you look at the parameters like this, you just ask, um, it would have been difficult for the Federal Bank to have acted at all. Uh, in the first place, I did mention that even if you reduce the monetary policy, they tell you any of the parameters, it is not likely going to stimulate lending at the period when they come in the period of recession. Uh, the supply of quality credit in the market is very important. And the banks are not, do not have so many of such credit that they cannot lend to. Uh, again, we're um, also dealing with the situation where a reduction in handling will further exacerbate the pressure on the FX market. We've seen depreciation of the Naira, and there are seeing pressures in the FX market. And you also see an uptick in inflation to the extent that the June inflation came at a point of 12.56%. So, if no one of interest rates would have driven these variables, uh, pressure on the exchange, the increase in inflation, further not. Again, on the converse, if you had contracted, if you had tightened, you would have worsened, it would have been counterintuitive, like the city and governor, you know, counterproductive. So they say that the primary objective of every central bank is to drive economic activities, to ensure that the restoration of economic activities, that period when the overriding objective is to see economic activities, you cannot afford to tighten your monetary policies because that would come contradiction of the reality to uh, gen gender improve productivity and improve productivity in Europe. So if you look at those contradictory pressures, then the most important thing for the monetary policy community to have done is what they did with the You know, in recent times, uh, yes, uh, uh, this COVID-19 has come as a huge, um, as a huge um, impedance to, to economic activities and uh, uh, by implication um, the figures are not looking very good. But we have seen quite um, um, some huge, uh, huge um, uh, attention being given to credit uh, by the APES Bank in recent times. Now the reports disclose that uh, 
uh, the total gross credit to the economy grew by 3.3 trillion naira, or, or there about 21% uh, in recent times. Uh, do you really think, uh, can, you, can you actually say that you could see the impact of this uh, uh, drive, this accelerated, accelerated credit uh, uh, drive by the APS bank? Can you feel it in the economy so far? Uh, and you have to go back and tell you that we're coming from a period of near shutdown of the economy. Uh, irrespective of the level of disbursement on ending that uh, took place in the last couple of months, it wouldn't have had material impact on the economic activities. You remember that between March and uh, July or uh, June, the economy was virtually shut down. So assuming you even borrow between that period, you could have deployed it. Uh, so you're going to see a lag effect of any credit disbursement that took place in the couple, last couple of months. Again, you also have to deal with the demand. Uh, there's actually no very weak consumer demand uh, as to encourage productive activities. If you look at other parameters such as um, uh, the consumer management, it's actually in the 40s, which is a contraction, which means the, the confidence that the economy uh, will grow, therefore they are slowing down on other places. Uh, so you can expect that whatever you do, like I said earlier, even if you use interest rates, you are not going to stimulate anything or borrow you. Uh, it will take some time for any new credit that is to have a direct impact on the economy. Of course, we know the Central Bank has come up with a lot of intervention. It's a one trillion dollar going into the manufacturing sector. There is a five one hundred billion going to the healthcare sector. There's fifty billion going to the households and healthcare enterprises. So this uh, fund, in, in at best, describes that intervention from designed to moderate the impact of COVID-19. It's only when you have uh, kind of stopped the descent that you can begin to see a recovery, and that's when you begin to see the impact of COVID-19. We're going to recover. Um, the, the outlook and the risk, uh, the risk uh, fundamentals here. Uh, would you think that uh, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria, by extension the NPC, uh, would you think that they've exhausted all conventional monetary policy tools? Well, I wouldn't use the word have exhausted all conventional monetary tools, but the situation we have in the economy, uh, some of the conventional monetary tools should not be effective in uh, driving some of the more objectives of the central bank. Look at the issue of monetary policy rate, which I did mention earlier, that if you even drop down the monetary policy rate, you are not likely uh, going to see an increase in lending, um, or you are not going to see an increase in economic activity driven by that. Uh, so the reality is that the unique or peculiarities of the current economic environment is so that conventional monetary tools are no longer as effective as they would have been uh, in a normal economic situation. And again, we also have our own challenges with transmission channels for this, some of these monetary policy tools. Uh, we know you know, we have a lot of low, very low consumer credits. Consumer credits are one of the most effective transmission channels uh, for uh, monetary policy tools. But in the absence of consumer credits, you really can't uh, influence people's decisions to buy or not to buy consumer goods, which will stimulate production activities and stimulate demand for credit. Would, would you say it uh, could be out of place, or would you say it would not be completely out of place uh, to nurse the fear of an increase in non-performing loans in the nearest future? Well, in every economy where there is an economic recession, uh, you should expect that borrowers might find it difficult to pay back their loan, because the reality about economic recession is that you are able to sell as much quantity of goods as you ordinarily should have done. Uh, uh, David, let me just take you back to what happened in the last three months. If you had an obligation, a credit loan that required you to be, to be servicing uh, interest payment or principal repayment every month uh, between April and May or June, you are likely going to have defaulted because there was no economic activity. So those are factors you have to remember that whenever there's an economic recession, you should prepare that they could be an option. All right, Jansen. Uh, we have seen quite some uh, attention being given to the non-oil sector by implication. We are looking, we are seeing uh, uh, some move by the central bank uh, to further diversify the economy. Uh, putting all of this in perspective, how strong would you say is uh, Nigeria's recovery prospects? 
Well, uh, it will be too early to call at this point in time. Uh, the, uh, the federal government has come up with a conflict resolution um, a strategy, which has projected that if we inject about 2.3 trillion naira into the economy, the economy will only contract by 0.59 percent. So let's hope that optimism will be realized. Uh, but of course, like I said, it's too early to call. Of course, we know the IMF is projecting the economy will contract by as high as 5.4 percent. Uh, but I think it's been between those. Uh, the estimation of uh, IMF and the estimation of the federal government. Uh, but all of this is will depend on how effective this uh, intervention me mechanism the government is putting in place uh, in driving economic development. You know, one could also argue that um, uh, the economy, no doubt, would need some robust investment um, strategy. Uh, uh, which, which of the strategies would you, would you want uh, uh, to see put in place? Robust investment strategies. Well, the, the only thing that will work is that we need to open the economy to private sector investors. Uh, if you look at the government revenue, it's actually in a weak situation, you know, weak condition. So the government does not have the resources, the economic resources, to uh, invest enough in the economy to build the infrastructure that will require, that will entail or uh, encourage faster economic growth. It does not even have the resources to invest in uh, the economy to the extent that can manage. Uh, or moderate the uh, economic recession. And that's why the government has actually approved the World Bank, IMF, the African Development Bank, the Islamic Development Bank for funding. And the government is lining up about $5.5 .5 billion of external funding to support economic recovery. The government is also approaching the Central Bank, where there is monetary authorities, and it's looking at about $1.1 trillion of the $2.3 trillion. So uh, the key thing that we need to be, and the private sector investment to get the economy. So, uh, drive the economy the faster growth and economic growth. Uh, Johnson Chuku, thank you so very much for your time with us. But I would let I wouldn't let you go yet without seeking uh, your opinion on uh, the issue around the NDDC and all the drama playing out. One could argue, what has the NDDC got to do with talking business? And I say to them, wherever money is mentioned, it is business. How do you react? How would you want to react to uh, the drama playing out, the, the lump of, the sum of money that have been mentioned at the NDDC? How would you react to all of that? Looking at the whole, uh, the whole need, the whole need to create um, invest, investors' uh, investments and confidence and trust in our system. How, how do you think all of this will play out or is playing out? Well, David, I would rather think we leave the political issues to the politicians. It would be trite of me to begin to talk about the areas of that, and it's not my area of our competence. And we are all watching them, hoping that uh, they will all work for the interests of the country. Justin, mm -hmm. thank you so very much for your time. Thank you so very much. We appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you.